Now then, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to make, uh, I'm looking at the screen, not the camera, so sorry about that. Uh, what we're going to do today is make a pinhole camera out of a beer can. So, well, this is a cider can, so I've got, so, and basically, um, all you have to do is make a top, cut the top off there, and a piece of 4x5, not 4x5, 5x7 um, paper fits really well inside the cam. So uh, I'll get on and just move the camera and show you how to do it. It's a nice quick, quick process. And especially we've got um, International Pinot Photography Day coming up at the end of the month, so it's a couple of weeks. Okay, the first thing you need is a beer can and uh, the tall ones are the best time to get for this because a piece of five by seven paper fits in it exactly right so so which means you don't have to paint the inside of the can black so you push the paper in and i don't know if you can see let's try and there it is, so if you can see just there, which you can, there's a little gap, there's a little gap in between. That's where your pinhole is and the rest of the can is actually exposing. So you don't really need to paint the inside of the can because it's all covered up with the photo paper. So the way to do it, let's take that one out. The way to do it is, first of all, you cut the tin, the, the lid of the tin off. Uh, the way to do that is obviously with a can opener. If you can get a can opener, that makes it smooth inside when you do, so you, you, there's less chance of you cutting your fingers because you end up going in a dark room with this. That's obviously a, a better thing, but you know, if you're an adult, you can be careful, can't you? Okay, so the next thing is you get a piece of black card. Put the can put the can on the top now the problem with this is the top of this can is narrower than the actual can so it's probably a good idea to do it from the bottom so you get a pencil put it in there tape around So you're left with, will that show up? Yeah, I guess it will. So you're left with um, where the can is. Now you don't just cut that out. What you do is you get your scissors and you cut to it. Now I always like to start off in quarters because I think it works really well in quarters. And I'll probably speed this up. So starting quarters, and then the more you have in between, the more accurate your folding is going to be. So all of this will be speeded up, so there's no point me talking really. It's all going to sound But I like talking to myself because I love the sound of my own voice, as everybody knows. Don't do that. Fold. Get all of these folded first. Tin. All of these will fold up. So I'm going to show it. So what you do, you fold it 
all the way around your cam like this. So then you tape that down as tightly as you possibly can. Which is totally out of thingy bob shot. Right. Let's do the other side. All right. Now. Okay. Let's go down nice and. Okay, so you've seen that I've got more tape here, but I've put two pieces of tape on. That's just to keep that down. The problem is there's still light going to get in through all these little holes here. These tiny little gaps. So we have to sort that out. Now, as you can see, we've got a lot of nasty, it doesn't look very nice. So I like to, at this stage, chop all that off. So now is a good time to see if it actually fits on the top. And it does, but it's quite loose. Which is another reason to chop this off, because what I like to do is to put the tape on the inside and come round and go over the top. And then the next piece of tape, I like to do the same. So obviously what we're doing now, we're making the inside or narrower by putting tape on the inside and that will give this a tighter fit. So we're left with that, so that should be a really nice tight fit. So, because we've put the extra tape inside and all round, what that does is you've got a double layer to make it light tight. It also makes that a tighter fit onto the can. Now what I've recently found out is that this tape, which I've called gaffer tape for years and years and years, if it's plasticky, apparently that's not gaffer tape. Uh, gaffer tape is made out of uh, material and it is definitely light tight, whereas this stuff isn't. So, um, but I've always, I'm a bit of a belt and braces guy, so I would like to put an extra layer over that where all the cuts were, just to make sure. It's completely light tight. And because I haven't got everything on my desk, we're going to have a bit of a cut here. Where I'm going to go and get some more tape. So, we've got our tin, the lid cut out, we've made a light tight lid. Because we've put the tape inside, as I keep telling, we have, that's quite a nice tight fit anyway. One of the things I always like to do, as I say, keep saying, I'm a belt and braces kind of guy, is to put another layer of tape just around there. And this is build, um, electrical tape. I think I said builder's tape. And what that does that makes it thicker, so it gives you even more of a, a seal on there. Now, the, the pinhole itself. So that's uh, a needle. So there's an ordinary needle. Can you see that there? Yes, you can. Bring it over there. So there's an ordinary needle in the light. 
What I've done with that is the rubber on the end of the pencil, I've pushed it in, so this is the sharp end, I've pushed it into the rubber there. And then I've used some polymorphic plastic just to go around it to keep it in from falling out. So if I can try and get that in the light so you can see that. There we go. So there's the needle. Now, there's a, a really good way to make a hole. If you're making a, a proper pinhole, what you don't want any bearings at the inside of the um, of the metal. So do I have a piece of metal? I do. So I'm going to change the focus on this, get as close as I can to it. There we go. Okay, so where is it in focus? There. So as you can see, this little bit is a bearing, and that is because you've just we've just punched. Oh, I think the other way around so you can see it. There we go. Right, we've just punched the needle straight through. And what that does is leave bearings at this side. You can see on there, look, and it's sticking up. Right, those bearings, so it's come back down here. Uh, let's focus it again. Okay. So, so say that's your piece of metal and you've just punched through. That's your piece of metal, and you've just punched through like that. The bearings will stick out like that. The light will actually bounce around inside those bearings, and it gives you these marks on the side. Now, I personally like that with this because I think it's very true to the, the construction of the, uh, of the pin hole itself. I will make another video to show you exactly how to make a pinot without the bearings. That is a lot more accurate and it's got an awful lot smaller hole. Uh, using a pin and bearing it through really gently. Uh, then you use steel wool to rub, rub the hole so there's no bearings and the hole is an awful lot thinner than the actual needle you're using to hold it. But these are a, a little bit more rough and ready type of uh, pinhole camera. And I, like I say, I think, I think this, this type of bearing, this type of mark on the side really adds to the, to the type of picture it is. Um, the paper I'm using here is glossy paper. And as you can see, there's a mark there and a mark there. That's because as it's curled round the tin the light has actually bounced back from the from the pinhole again if you use i like that because it's being true to its um the construction of the thing and, and the materials used the way to avoid that is to use uh, a matte finish on your paper so let's finish making this which I already have actually. So I found roughly where the middle of that is, which is, is there, you can measure it if you want, but suck it and see. And just punch your needle through. You don't have to make a fancy thing like this, you can actually just get an ordinary needle and just punch that through. I've lost it there, punch that through. So little piece of builder's tape. Builder's tape, why do I call it saying builder's tape? Electrical tape. And we just fold a little bit over like that. And that's to give you a tab. Put that over the hole. And that stops the light getting in. That's your shutter. So you open it, expose it, and then close it. So this is my dark bag. I've got a box of photographic paper in there. Open that up. There's the other side. There we go. 
double layer of so this is my photographic paper so I've put that in there that will go on there nice and tightly yep now what I'm going to do inside the bag which is obviously you're not going to be able to see because I want to do it in in darkness is put that in there uh, now, obviously, I've just looked for the hole there to put that in the middle. You can't do that in the dark because... So what you need to do is put your finger down the hole. You can feel the bearings. You can feel where the hole is. You could also feel where your tape is and just make sure your hole's there. But obviously, if your hole... If you've, you've put your paper around there in, on the inside, that's fine, your hole. But if you've put that there, that covers your hole up, you're not going to get a picture. So that's really important. Emulsion side inwards and make sure the hole is, is visible. So I'll put that in there. We'll go off while I put this in because there's no point in you uh, watching me fumbling about in a dark bag. Okay, so there we are. We've got a, a loaded a loaded camera. Now, obviously that doesn't need to be done in total darkness unless you're using film. If you're using film, that shutter, that hole, the pinhole we've made is far too big for film. It works really well for paper. Uh, now, this, the way you're supposed to do this is once that comes out in the dark room, you've taken it out of your tin, you put it in developer, you put it in stock bath, and then you put it in fixer, and you're left with this, all been well, if you've got a good exposure. There is another way to do this where you do not need a dark room. Uh, and this is the way I'm going to try it now. Um, and it's called a Lumin print. Lumin. Yeah, Lumin print. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set it up on the window, pointing out the window for a couple or three days. Where are we now? Wednesday. So I'll probably put, do this on Sunday and take it down on Sunday. So that's Wednesday till Thursday, till Friday, till Saturday, till Sunday afternoon. So it's going to have four days exposing and the light that's actually going in through the hole will burn into the photo paper which will massively overexpose it but that's what we want because we're not going to put it anywhere near developer we're going to take it out and scan it straight away and we will have an image i'm being very positive here we will definitely have an image from this so i'm going to set that up now leave that going and uh, all been well, we'll have some pictures. If this one doesn't come out, I'm going to uh, scan a few of these in and put some of these at the end of the video. All right, cool. Thanks for viewing, viewer. This is a scan of the uh, the negative I keep showing you. And I just flipped that and made it into a positive. Uh, so it's here. Uh, and the next picture, unbelievably... Um, a fly got in between the the can on the window which is why we've only got half a picture so this is the uh, this is the lumen print and as you can see it's a lot less quality than the um, the actual uh, chemical produced one but I still I really like this and and it is something that we can actually uh, achieve without a dark room which I think is absolutely brilliant so good luck viewer <laughs>